reducing rates before multiplying. We know that we can reduce fractions before multiplying. This is also called canceling. So we identify common factors, numbers that we can evenly divide in both the numerator and denominator. Obviously, 5 is the greatest common factor of 5 and 5, so we reduce that. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 5 divided by 5 is 1. The greatest common factor of 4 and 2 is 2, so we can, um, we can cancel those out. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And then we have the 3 and the 6 left. The greatest common factor of 3 and 6 is 3. So we can divide 3 divided by 3 is 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. We have just reduced our fraction prior to multiplying, and it left us with a very easy multiplication problem. So multiplying across the, denom the numerators, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, and the denominators, 2 times 1 times 2 is 4. Think of this as a legal shortcut in math. And you want to use this shortcut because you are more likely to end up with an answer that's already in lowest terms. Then you won't have your teacher nagging you to reduce your fractions. In the same way that we cancel um, numbers prior to multiplying, we can also cancel units before multiplying. Since rates are a, rat a ratio of two measures, Multiplying and dividing rates involves multiplying and dividing units. In this problem, the unit hours is below and above the division line. So we can cancel them out just like this, leaving us with a very simple multiplication problem. Four times two, four miles times two equals eight miles over 1, which equals 8 miles. In this case, we canceled units because we're multiplying a rate by another measurement. So our rate in this problem is 4 miles per hour, and we're multiplying that times 2 hours. So we, use, we cancel units to simplify the multiplication problem. Look at this example. Multiply 55 miles per hour by 6 hours. The word per indicates division. So we'll write 55 miles per hour. And we're multiplying this times 6 hours which we'll write as a ratio over 1. We, we see the unit hours above and below the division line, so we can cancel that, leaving us with the problem 55 miles times 6, which is 330 miles. So this equation could be used to express a problem like, I rode in my car for six hours, traveling at an average speed of 55 miles per hour. How far did I travel? Well, I would have traveled 330 miles. In this problem, we canceled units once again because we're um, multiplying a rate, 55 miles per hour, by another measurement, six hours. So canceling units simplifies our problem. In this example, we see that Antonia flew a plane for three hours, traveling at 500 miles per hour. How far did she go? Well, this is the kind of problem that you could do using mental math. Three hours times 500 miles equals 1,500 miles and you probably could figure that out in your head. But we can see the equation down below here. She traveled 500 miles per hour times three hours. The unit hours 
appears above and below the division lines. We can cancel those out and then do the multiplication. 500 times 3 equals 1,500. 500 miles, I should say, times 3 equals 1,500 miles. Our last example, multiply 5 feet by 12 inches per foot. We write ratios of 5. Well, here we go. 5 feet over 1 times 12 inches over one foot. And then we identify the units that appear above and below the division lines, in this case feet. We can cancel those out. And now our problem is five times 12 inches, which is 60 inches. In this problem, we canceled units because we're converting one unit to another, in this case, feet to inches. So we've shown two uh, instances in which we cancel units. The first, when we're multiplying a rate by another measurement, and the second, when we're converting one unit to another.